Hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? Hello, daddy. How's everything there? How's your dog? How, how's your day? How's uh, your family? My day is doing great. Um, it's been a nice day. My puppy's, uh, she's getting old, but she's, she's good. Um, <laughs> and uh, back here to learn some more with all of you guys out there. So thanks again, Saw, for having me. And how's your day? How's all the chickens and ducks and geese? <laughs> yes, my parents love it. And me too. And they are good. And they know what I figure out. There are a lot of uh, fruit trees. And that's amazing. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yes, yes. So and uh, I really enjoy to to have some fresh fruits. Yes, fresh fruit vegetables. Yes, my mom can... also she loves. My daddy loves also. And, yeah, we... uh, yeah, that's amazing. And I went to the beach, and it was amazing. Mm. Everything in one spot, <laughs> almost farm land, and and. Uh, I am close to the beach also, so that's amazing. Yes, I remember. I remember being there, visiting that uh, same location. And yes, and yes. It was a beautiful area. Um, nice beach. Yes. I need to show you guys our beach one of these times. Um, and how uh, the difference in our our tides are than yours, because our tide will drop twenty feet. And that's a that's a lot compared to you guys drop like three feet. You know? So <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, a big, big difference. Yeah. Yes. Didn't. So. Well, are we ready to get uh, learning some say, idioms? Yes. Let's do it. Eh? Yes. I am eager to learn. Okay, good. So yes, now native speakers, they love you guys, love using phrasal verbs. Uh, you guys love using advanced adjectives. Yeah? Yeah. So, and also love use idioms. So now you're going to learn uh, 150 common idioms. That is the second class. We had the first one, that is the second in the sequence. And so, in this section, you're going to see the idiom. You're going to understand the meaning. And you see an example sentence. And you see a picture to really help you remember this idiom. Let's get started. Yes, Daddy, you can start. All right, we're at number 31. And this is uh, to get or to have the best of both worlds. It's like having your cake and eating it too. You know, have you ever heard that saying? So, yeah, to have, to get or to have the best of both worlds is like, um, let's say, having a bunch of money and being able to spend it and still having a bunch of money and not spending and never ever spending all your money. That would be having the best of both worlds. Um, like I said, having cake and eating it too. That's best of both worlds. Let's say some people would say being able to go to the beach and living by the beach or like you got, you got fruit, farmland and the beach. That's, the best of both worlds. So, yeah, go ahead, so. Oh, yes, yes, great, uh-huh. And good to mention it because it's exactly that, yes. I'm getting now the, the best of two worlds, so live in a city and uh, in the country also, no? 
because there are a lot of trees and uh, fruit trees and animals and uh, beach close. So yes, that's uh, that's it for the this next one to get uh, the best of two both words or to have the best of both words. So this means when you enjoy the advantages of two very different things, at the same time, she works in the city and lives in the country. So she gets the best of both words. Yes. All right. Lion King. <laughs> so yeah, number 32, the lion's share. Like the, uh, you would say. That the, was a perfect movie. Yeah, I love the Lion King. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you should, she put the largest part of most. I even of, cried. <laughs> you cried on it. The movie, movie yeah. one. Yes, when the when the, uh, the lion listened the voice, it was his daddy, daddy's voice. I cried in that part. Yes, I would see that happening very much. It was they did a good job on the movie. I say. Yes. Yes. Made it so realistic. Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> so, yeah. I knew the song by heart. By heart, I knew. I knew, but you could sing that. Uh, trying to to remember now. <laughs> um. So yeah, the the largest part of most of something like having land and divvying it up, but you get most of it. Um having a pizza and giving out a slice to everybody, but you get the rest. <laughs> That's the lion's share. Having the biggest room in the house, we call that the master bedroom or the master suite. That would be the lion's share. That would be daddy's and mommy's share. No. So go ahead, stop. Yes. Good job, yes. So the lions share. This is when you um actually oops the largest part of or most of something. Uh, example, I did the lion's share of work on this project. Good. Okay. Right. Number 33. I don't know if you've ever tried to balance on a ball, but it doesn't work very well. So, oh goodness! So it wasn't a ball, but I tried in some other stuff at the gym. Oh. It was to to try as he he's trying. Should yeah. be a ball. The it only ball. ball. <laughs> the globe. <laughs> the world. So yeah, to be on the ball, not on top of the world, just mm -hmm. on the ball, to be on the ball, to be getting, uh, to be on top of everything, um, have your, all your stuff done at work, um, on time or ahead of time. Um, everything's up going good for you. So you're, you're on top of, every little detail that comes at you, you're on the ball, you're moving forward uh, with your projects. Um, yeah, to be on the ball, to be motivated to have everything done on time and in sequence. You go ahead, so. Oh, yes, great. So have you ever tried? To stand on a ball, no. Yes, to stand on the ball. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't even try. Yes. On a, on a um, I tried standing. Actually, I did really good on one of those uh, um, hoverboards, and I did good, but not the first. I fell the first time, but no, that'd be dumb to try to stand on a ball. No, huh? Really? Pogo ball, maybe. Oh Never yeah, a pogo Long ball. time ago. <laughs> Yeah. Long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> uh, ten years old. Yes. <laughs> Less uh, than that. 
<laughs> that's a good memory also. Yes. Yes. Go I ahead. bought one to my niece and oh. she was crying. <laughs> They're not as good as they were um, when Pogo we were ball, Just stand on the ball. Huh? The pogo uh, balls. Pogo that ball, pogo ball. Yeah, they made them again and they were not as good at all. They were cheap. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I seen them not too long ago, a couple of years ago. Yeah, they were just cheap. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So go ahead and finish this one up. Yes. So uh, to be on the ball, yes. This is when you, you're performing really well. Well, you completed all those reports already. You're on the ball today. Next. Ah, oh, to pull someone's leg or to we say also you, you're joshing me, right? You're just joshing me. Um, so yeah, to, to, to joke with someone, to have um, pranks or just telling jokes uh, or remember the old, you got something on your shirt and you look down and they go, Phew. It's pulling someone's leg. Um, and, or you could say your epidermis is showing. And you're mm -hmm. like, what? Your epidermis means your skin. So that's joshing someone or pulling your leg. So yeah, just telling jokes, playing pranks. We'll go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. So, uh, eh? To pull someone's leg is when you joke with someone, yes. So, uh, don't get upset, I'm just pulling your leg. This is when, so you joke with someone, yes. So, we usually use this, uh, to reassure. Re someone yes so you're only joking don't get upset i'm just pulling your leg mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah okay. just ah oh, okay. so number 35 to pull yourself together when you're uh we would say that like if you're hung over that day, you need to pull yourself together. Or if you, your mind was elsewhere and not on what you you should be focusing on, like at work or at home, um, your spouse, you need something you're supposed to be getting done and you're not, we would say you need to pull yourself together, get it together. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Fix, fix your mind and get it together. If you need a break for a minute, go pull yourself together. So, yeah. it's a good one. Go ahead. Yes, yes, that's a good one. Good job. Good examples. Amazing, actually. Yes, so to pull yourself together, this is when you need to calm down. You regain your composure after being really upset, angry, agitated, annoyed, and then you calm down. So I might say, pull yourself together. It was a false alarm. So the alarm made you really agitated and I'm telling you to calm down. And next. Then... Yeah. Um, yeah. So number 36, so far, so good. I like that because sometimes I am uh, superstitious. So, so I try not to say stuff like that as in like, if it's, 
has someone that come up to you and says, is it raining over at your house yet? And I said, no, so far so good. But then sometimes you say that and then it starts raining. Yeah. So, <laughs> never. Yes, exactly that. Yeah, or how how is the equipment running today? Well, so far so good. Um, but then you're like, oh, I better not say nothing. Knock on wood. We we would say knock on wood. Do you guys ever say that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's not raining today. And then we're like, oh no, knock on wood. But yeah, so far so good. As long as everything's going well, so far so good. No, no mishaps, no um, breakdowns, no rain. So yeah, so far so good. Go ahead, Saw. Yes, great. Uh -huh. Exactly. So so far so good. Yes, this is how you reply when you want to let someone know that everything is okay until now. Mm -hmm. How's the project going? So far, so good. Yes, next, Daddy. Yeah, straws, huh? To be the last straw, number 37. Uh, this is the last straw to be the last straw. We would say, yeah, this is the last straw when you have the last, when you made it to the last, um, chance. So you get three chances and you pass that third chance. You say, this is the last straw, or this is the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but it is up yes, to the yes. point past past where you have no more chances. So you, my patience is drawn to an end. Yeah, to, to be the last straw, I'm going to blow up now. So go ahead, Saw. You got? Go yeah. Ahead. Mm -hmm. good yes so to be the last straw this is when you have no patience patience left for someone's errors or wrong mistakes or their mistakes or wrongdoings so i might say this is her fifth time being late this month that's the last straw no more patience for her mistakes <laughs> no next more. No yeah more. <laughs> yeah number 38 uh man time flies when we're having fun which it always does when you're counting the minutes or waiting for water to boil, it takes forever. That's because you're waiting. Christmas takes forever to come when you're a kid. Yeah. I remember. But um, yeah, when, when you're having fun, though, time seems to fly. So it flies by. Next thing you know, it's time to go back to work. And you're like, man, I was having a good time. So, yeah, time flies when you're having a good time or having fun. Go ahead, Sa. Great, yes. Yeah, so time flies when you're having fun. This is just to say you don't notice how long something takes because it's enjoyable. So you might look at your watch and say, Oh, wow, it's 1 a.m. already. And then someone could reply and say, yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Next. Oh, yeah, number 39, to be bent out of shape, to be all upset about something you could be upset about something worth being upset about or being bent out of shape just because you are not in the best of moods. 
So I would say, why are you all bent out of shape over some spilt milk? <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no reason to be bent out of shape. We will get this job done. We got it handled. Settle down and go relax somewhere under a shade tree. <laughs> so no, yeah. no, be bent out of shape to be upset. So go ahead. Great, yes, amazing to be bent out of shape. This means to be upset. The example Janice is bent out, bent out of shape because she has to work late tonight. Next, Daddy. Yeah, it's so number 40. Well, this guy seems like he's having a good time. To make matters worse. To kick a dead horse while it's down. We um, had one similar to this. I don't remember which one it was. But yeah, to make matters worse, to when it's already raining on your program and then the storm comes in and starts raining cats and dogs even more. So to, uh, yeah, to make your problems even worse than they already are, you say... Um, I got, I'm getting an eviction notice from my house, but now my power just got shut off too. So you would say to make matters worse, my power just got shut off also. So yeah, go ahead. So. <laughs> yes. So to make matters worse. So. Here, matters in this sense means problems, to make problems worse. So I might say, I have to work late tonight and to make matters worse. I have an appointment early tomorrow morning. Next. <laughs> what do we got for the next? Yeah. We got to switch it over. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're still on number 40. You want to switch it to the next one? Um, so yes. I'll switch it to 41. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was thinking about the next one. Oh, okay. <laughs> 40, 40. <laughs> Why I had this mistake? Oh my! <laughs> I don't know. So yeah. I... No, you don't know. <laughs> my head is not is not in its place. <laughs> Your head is somewhere else. You're there physically, but not mentally. Is what we say. <laughs> Not when I did this material, <laughs> probably not. It was 150, you know? <laughs> yes, it was a lot. You got a lot. It took a while to do, yes. That, yes, it was a lot. Awesome. But enjoyable also. But yes, I I made it twice. <laughs> I like how you do it. You did a good job. So yeah, I like this one here, number 41. I like these ones because I know exactly what they mean by don't judge a book by its cover mm -hmm. there's a song it's called don't uh check my swag it's a christian song and he's a rapper but it's it's basically like um don't judge a book by its cover because of the way he's dressed but yet he's he's got tattoos but yet he's still a christian but look at this guy he's got a mohawk he looks like a punk rocker um someone that uh you wouldn't want your children to be around, but then you see in the shadow there, he's an angel. So he's a, he's a good person. But just because he's dressed funny and weird, people would judge him. And yeah, so. And, and as Saw, she's seen past my tattoos and seen me, so she didn't judge me by my cover. So, yeah, just um. because it looks, yeah, it doesn't mean it's it's a bad a bad person or a bad thing um 
So yeah, don't judge it just because the way it looks. Look into it first. Read yeah. the back. Yeah, so go ahead, Sop. Yes, yes. Great. For sure, yes, I I didn't judge you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, by its cover, like <laughs> a book by its cover. So yes, don't judge a book by its cover. It, uh, it means don't judge someone or something purely on appearance. For example, uh, let's say I'm hiring people and I say, I'm not going to hire him. Look at his hair. And then my colleague would say, well, don't judge a book by his cover. Look at his resume. Yes, don't judge a book by its cover. Have you have you reviewed his resume? Okay. For sure. So uh, number 42, we got uh, a funny picture here. This guy's flying in the air with some two chairs to fall between two stools. You know, I don't know. I've never heard of this one. Let's see. We would say to fall between oh, yeah. the... Uh, what, what do you got? Used when something falls to fails to achieve both of two objects. Yeah, I've never, I've actually never heard of this one. To fall between two stools. Um, yeah, so go ahead and take this one away, Saw. Oh, yes, uh huh. Okay, yeah, so to fall be uh, between two stools. Yes. Oh, didn't you listen about before? Ah, I missed this one. We uh, got something similar where something falls between the cracks, but that's like um like if you have um documents and there's one of the documents that slips in the cracks, falls between the cracks where you don't see that document. Um oh. so it gets put up in the roster or whatever. So yeah, fall between the cracks or slip in the cracks, sit slip between the cracks, but something that the the government does all the time slips things through the cracks do you know so go ahead so yeah, uh -huh. yeah take this one away yeah so uh this idiom has to fall between two tools when this is when something fails to achieve to separate objectives. So let's say you're planning to watch a romantic comedy movie. That movie is supposed to be romantic and funny at the same time. A romantic comedy, two, two objectives. So you could say the movie, that movie, fell between two stools. It wasn't romantic and it wasn't funny. Oh, that's good. Perfect. You learned something today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. I bet you if I said that at work, people would not know what I was talking about, though. Yes, yeah, some in Portuguese, I don't know. Uh, sometimes I need to take a look what it means. Because <laughs> yeah. there are so many. Even in different regions of Brazil, there are different ones. We used to say that and even though there are some uh, dictionary for Northeast people, because they have a lot of um, so many idioms, but in the whole Brazil. Yes. So that, I mean, yeah, yeah maybe even people on the East Coast say it falls between two stools um yeah so falls in between you know the judgments so yeah number 43 to cost an arm and a leg 
Uh, I got a joke for that one, but um, might take too long. I don't know. So, anyways, yeah, the cost of arms. Say, please. Can I say I, it. Yes. Um. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> so God made Adam, and uh, and he he had him name all the animals, and for doing so, um, he was gonna treat him with something, but then. He uh, Adam is like, well, I need a partner, and well, God was like, okay, well, I'm gonna make you the perfect being, someone that's gonna <clears throat> do your becking call, be there anytime you need. You're gonna be the most beautiful being in the the universe. They're always gonna pick you up when you're down. They're gonna help you out all the time, all your pleasures. And he said, whoa, 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 what's that going to cost me? And God said, well, an arm and a leg. And he's like, oh, that seems pretty steep. Let me think about that for a oh. minute. Uh -huh. Well, comes back to God and asks, well, what can I get for a rib? <laughs> so. <laughs> and then here we are with the women we have now. So. <laughs> Just kidding. It is a joke. Oh, yes. Yes. That's really good one. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, yes, trying to pay attention. Got to pay attention. Yes. So, yeah. when, when I talk with you, it's like make a mess in Zoom. I don't know the, this platform that I, we record. <laughs> it makes a mess. Yes. Your voice and mine, and uh, uh, we don't understand uh, who is talking and uh, what uh, we are talking about, you know. Oh, oh yes. it seems like it comes pretty clear through my end. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. No, just uh, the record, yes. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if you understood that joke, but. Yes, yes, it was a really good one. Yeah. And uh, uh, yes, it's it's good to share because uh, it's eh, it's interesting to know, uh, and a lot of things it's new for me, you know. I know. Yes. yes. So number forty three to cost an arm and a leg something that is way expensive, way too expensive. Um, and so we would say, well, geez, that's that's costs an arm and a leg for that. That car is really expensive. That's an arm and a leg. So it's something way more than it should be. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, to cost an arm and a leg. This is when something is exceptionally expensive. Uh, my fight cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> so it means something that it's even more expensive than usually is. Yes, my fight cost me an arm and a leg. Yes. Oh, the Golden Gate Bridge. You've never seen that yet. No, no. Mm -hmm. That's in San Francisco. Just down below me, not too far. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Number forty-four. Yeah, that was. Uh, I have never visited, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the West Coast, California. Um, it used to be the longest bridge in the world. Oh yeah. Yeah, over a mile long. So uh -huh. yeah. Number 44, to cross. Yes, I wasn't sure that it was exactly that place. Oh, you wasn't when you picked the picture? Yes, I, I thought, but there's so many and I have never visited, so it wasn't mentioning. That's actually an icon. Um, anyone in the in the U.S. would know exactly what bridge that is if they see the picture of it. Uh -huh. But anyone that doesn't live in the U.S., they would have no idea what that is. 
but I could guarantee you anyone in the U S if you showed that to them, they would know exactly what bridge that is. Oh, uh huh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very, very popular. Oh, great. Uh -huh. People died building that. They actually got the bins. You know what the bins are when you dive too deep and you come up too fast, you get the bins. Uh -huh. When they were building this bridge, they would, they actually, um, sealed off around the bases of these two pillars where water wasn't in there. Even though that there was no water in the, the area where they were working, the pressure around them from the water pushing on the walls against them, they would come up out from underneath in an elevator and they would still get the bends. Even though they weren't underwater per se, they were still under the pressure of the water around them. So they yeah. still, they would still get the bends when they came up and they did not know what was going on. These people dying and they had no idea why, because they weren't diving, but they were still at the pressure of being like they were diving. Ooh, wow. Yeah. yeah even though that, that, that's crazy. I didn't know that either. I just learned that about 15 years ago. Um, that, that could happen, but it's crazy. So anyways, to cross a bridge when you come to it, or um, as in I would say, or someone come up to me and start complaining about something that we are not even close to yet. And I said, well, let's wait and cross that bridge when we get to it or when we get there. Um, no reason to complain about something until you get to that point, to get to that spot in uh in the day or in your in the process of your project so yeah let's deal with this let's deal with that when we get there let's cross a bridge or let's cross that bridge when we get there so go ahead so okay great uh -huh. yes so to cross a bridge when you come to it this is used to remind someone that you only need to deal with a situation when it happens. So your friend might be concerned, what if I forget all my words during my IELTS speaking exam? And then you tell that friend, Cross that bridge when you come to it. Good. Yes, worried uh, uh, the problem that happens. So. Oh. The next. Don't, Ready? Don't smashed. Yeah, don't oh. cry. Spilt milk. Yes, this is one that um, we use a bit. No reason to cry over spilt milk. No reason to cry over something so petty, so little. Um, that's oh, we use we... that one also. Oh, so you know this one, yes. Mm -hmm. You say milk also? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly the same, uh-huh. Oh, so they already know what this one is. So the same, how would you say it in Portuguese? Yes, yes, but if you have some examples, it's good to add also. But how do you, how would you how do you say it in Portuguese? Uh, não chore o leite derramado. Não chore o leite derramado. É não é ó não chore. Não chore. O leite. O leite. Derramado. Derramado. Uh huh. It's exactly the same. Oh, perfect. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like if uh, uh, something's fixable, which most things are fixable, um, no reason to complain about it or cry, to uh, bitch and moan. Let's just fix it and get it done. Um, yeah, so anyways, yeah, go for it, stop. Yeah, just to cry over spilled milk. This is when someone complain about a loss from the past. So let's say I had a party weeks ago and now 
I'm complaining. I can't believe it. John didn't come to my party. Well, my friend can say don't cry over spilled milk. It was three weeks ago. Why are you still talking about it? Yes. Yes. So old, not even worth crying over still. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Whoa, look at these pictures. Uh, so yeah, the <laughs> number 46. What is that thing? <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. Oh my god. Wow. Meow. <laughs> So yes, uh, as in like, don't go looking in places that you shouldn't be looking in because you might your curiosity might get you hurt. You oh, know, wow. yeah. Um, even even listening in on people's conversations can actually get you hurt. You <laughs> might overhear <laughs> someone's conversation that. Uh, can get you killed depending on where you're at. Any any um, big cities, you can be really careful to listen in on something. The government's conversations or somebody high up in the mob. But um, yeah, don't be going and looking in other people's closets. You can say to curiosity killed the cat. Oh, yes, like, that one I, I didn't know. Can you say again? Something that you, if you, you know, being curious, being curious and going and looking in other people's closets can get you killed. Yes, mm -hmm. being curious can get you injured or, yeah, like this cat. What is this wire here? Let me check this out. Blam! Got him electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor cat. His hair. Is that his hair, dude? <laughs> looks like a gremlin <laughs> yes mm. oh my meow <laughs> go ahead stop poor cat <laughs> <laughs> who likes cats anyways <laughs> yes so okay that curiosity kills the cat this is used to say that be inquisitive or asking a lot of questions can lead you to an unpleasant situation. So let's say your husband or wife uh, uh, is doing for you a surprising birthday party and you ask a lot of questions. What are you doing? Where are we going? Who's coming? Then your husband or wife can say, curiosity kills the cat. Just to remind you, don't ask so many questions. And next to that. Good, good. Um, yeah, so number 47, uh, to miss the boat. Um, yeah, so like if uh, you, you were running to try and get in the line um, for a free meal or someone was giving away free, free uh, TVs, and you, you get there and it's all done. You miss the boats. Man, I didn't get here in time. Or someone, uh, or you're having a meeting and they were describing everything that's going on um, in the next, for the next uh, quarter of the season. And you show up late and you miss the boat. Now you don't know what's going on for the next quarter. Uh, so you have no idea. So you have to get filled in. 
But um, yeah, I don't know if we have one that's in one of these. I don't even know if it's part of this, but we say uh, the ship has sailed. That's that's kind of similar, but I mean, not meaning wise, but the ship has sailed. Have you heard that one before? The ship has sailed, like, mm -hmm. but um, that one's that one's a good one too. So I don't know if we got that one. Hopefully, hopefully that's in this. It's something that uh, something that's already been done. We don't need to discuss that anymore. This ship has sailed. So yeah, no, go ahead, Saw. No, oh, great, uh huh. Yes, it's good to share what you know because yeah, a lot of people can can learn more and understand better when people say it is some idioms. Yes. So it's good to explain and even bring it, your knowledge. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what causes it to be an idiom. Or I'm I'm not sure I, how it works, but it's just another meaning of I'm assuming it's it means it's another meaning of something that you're explaining is what's an idiom. So like the ship is sailed would be one, yeah. Oh yeah, so. yeah. So there's probably a lot more than what you got up there, 150. There's probably way more. Yeah. Yes, there are a lot. A lot. Yes. Way more than 150. You just probably picked the 150. Yeah. That's popular. everywhere. There are lots more, I think. Yes, and they they keep coming up with more all the time. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Always new ones. Yes. People create new ones. Well, just they like new um slang. And these kids nowadays have these slang words. And it helps, uh, they have more and more because now you have texting and with the texting, they they put it much smaller. How would you, how do you say that? Um, or you just kind of meme it out there or you uh, like OMG, you know, instead of saying, oh my God, they say OMG. And a lot <laughs> of that started back when we had to push the one button or the, the two button to get the A, B, and C. So you'd have to push it twice to get the B, three times to get the C. So instead of having to type out a whole word, you would just push, you know, the O and the M and the G. And so the abbreviations uh, started, I think, back then more than now because it's yeah. easier. Now. We didn't have the whole um, keyboard on our phone at that time. We had 10 letters. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And then to get the smiley face, you had to do the, or the winky face, you had to do the dot, dot, or the dot in the apostrophe and the comma. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the little quote, not quotation, but the, I forget what it's called, the little circles, half circles. But that was your smiley face or your winky face. That's what started emojis too, remember? Yes, yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's interesting. Yes. Technologies and uh, uh, people are always bringing something new and uh, to help uh, in people's life also. Yeah. I remember it, it was hard. It was hard to text. I hated texting because it was too hard. And people mm -hmm. would text me, and I'm like, stop texting me, just call me. <laughs> I was like, I ain't dealing with this, it takes too long. Yes, or I use audio, no? Recording audio. Oh, we didn't have that though then either. Oh, uh -huh. yes, yeah. yes. We only had, you only had text and call. And that's why I said, I think all children, kids under 18 should have mm -hmm. to have a flip phone. So the only way to text is they have to text the old school way and they have no internet on their phone. So there's no reason for them to have the touch of the world in the finger under <laughs> one finger. They don't need that. They're, they're, they're under 18. They don't need all that information. They got school. That's what school's for. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, to, to be able to have every knowledge in the world under, the, under one finger, they don't need that. 
No, no, for sure not. It'd be illegal for a child under 18 to have a smartphone. <laughs> Go ahead, Sasha. Okay, yes. So, Ed, to miss the boat trip means uh, lose an opportunity. Yes, to do uh, something by being slow to act. Yes, you're too slow to take an action. The example, the application deadline was last week. I missed the boat. Next, Daddy. Nice. Yes, number 48, to be on fire. I'm on fire. Light him up, 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 light him up, up, up. So, yeah, um, to be rocking it, to uh, be on top of your game, um, to to make the shot and not miss a single shot in, your, in, your, in that game. You know, you're on fire. Uh, no one can stop you. Uh, yeah, to be just nailing everything. And you're on fire when you, when uh, it's perfect. Like I, there's times where um, no matter what I do, it, it just, I'm hitting the head, the nail on the head. And, and then there's times like when I'm playing pool, you know, pool. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Every shot. And then there's times I can't, but you would say, I'm on fire tonight. Yeah, so go ahead, stop. Yes, amazing. Uh -huh. Okay, so to be on fire, this is uh, to perform very well. Wow, your presentation was amazing. You were on fire. Yes. Ah, yes. so, oh, man, to spill the beans. To be a narc or, uh, yeah, so when you have a secret and you tell somebody and you tell them, don't tell anybody about what has happened around here, but then they go and they spill the beans. They just let it all out and tell everybody you're considered a narc or you're spilling the beans. Stop spilling the beans. Uh, Stop telling you our secrets. So yeah, don't let out the secrets. Go ahead, Saw. Yes, great. You always have good examples. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so to spill the beans. This is when uh, you reveal a secret when you shouldn't have review a secret. So let's say you're planning a surprise party for someone and then you tell everyone, don't spill the beans. Don't reveal the secret. Next. Yeah. Um. Oh, man. Poor puppy. This is one of the dogs I want to get. If I get another dog, there's a cute dog like that. So, yes, number 50. Look like you <laughs> No, no, no. This is a little dog. He's a little pug. He's like a pug. Um, yes, when you are your... Uh, when Roxy was a baby. Yeah, she was adorable. Oh Looks my like her <laughs> as a baby. Except for the ears are sticking up. She's got floppy ears. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There was one time I remember specifically when I got her, um, we got her in August or September. And then we went to go see my family for Thanksgiving in November. And she was just a little puppy. When of course, all the kids loved, her. loved having a puppy around, you know, who doesn't? Yes. Who doesn't? Uh, so much food. I thought she was going to pop. She was just a round ball. And then, so I asked my aunt, what do I do? She's going to die. <laughs> wow. I just go take her for a walk. She's just got to poop. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's see, not a good idea. She was like this big around. 
It was just a puppy, you know. She, she, she just cleaned up everything that she could smell. She didn't know when to stop eating because she was just a puppy. Oh but yeah. yeah, number 50 to be What's under my the dog? I had a dog and uh, someone throw a, a bubble gum on the floor and uh, my little, little dog had this bubble gum and he passed away. From the gum? Yes, so sad because he was a little, little dog and a baby at so it was a small dog slash also puppy? I tried hard, all veterinary th that I could, but it didn't work, no. Will you, this would be one of the, your um, your words you would have up there. So, yes, the gum led to my dog's demise. So that would be one that you could use, demise, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, something leads to your demise, your death. You say demise. Uh, oh. to your, yeah. Demise. Just demise, yeah. Well, but that's a bummer. I didn't know gum could kill a dog. Yes, see? It said that it was what caused the death. <laughs> yes. It was a little, little dog. How much gum did it eat? It was just one, you see? But it was a baby. Yeah, but a gum shouldn't kill your dog. Yes, I don't know what happened, but they tried. Uh, they did a lot, but didn't work. Yeah, too bad. So, veterinarian tried. You don't feed your dog gum. Yes, you see. I don't know what I was. A little child, and uh, my parents tried also, but didn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's too bad to hear. That's a bummer. Yes. Oh so, mm -hmm. yeah, let's get back it's on. Really sad for a child. <laughs> As I said, that, that... I didn't have a dog no more after that, because I was so stuck on this dog. But I had just for a month. It was just a month. Maybe your parents Wait. didn't want the dog anymore and they said it died because you gave it bubble gum. <laughs> no, I didn't. It wasn't me. They might have used it as an excuse to get rid of the dog. <laughs> yeah. Parents do that. But I was so sad. Yeah. I spent all afternoon with the dog in my in my actually i remember until now i was in front of my house with my dog and waiting because they the, the veterinarian told me oh just uh be with him and try to to keep him close to your body and uh, see what it happens see if you get past it Yes, yes, because what we could do, we already have done. I don't know if it did, they didn't have a lot to do. I don't know. I was so so little yet. Okay. Well, let's finish that conversation later. I'm sorry to hear. That's a bummer. And um, I'm sure that is a bad time in your uh, childhood. Yes. <laughs> So let's get back on the road on our path of our idioms. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So number 50, to be under the weather. Um, yeah, just not be feeling good. Uh, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. May I take the day off? You would say. Um, not feeling good. Yeah, so pretty simple on that one. Feeling under the weather. Not feeling good, not feeling or feeling sick of some sort. The brown bottle flu. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. Oh. So, go ahead, Saw. Great. Yes, so to be under the weather, this is when you feel unwell, when you feel sick. I'm a little under the weather today. Next.
Number 51. So, yes, um, a blessing in disguise. So this is some something that you would have when it seems like your world's crashing down on you. Um, everything's just going wrong. And then it turns around a few months later and everything is gone the way it's supposed to. So like if you had a girlfriend or or something like that, and she left you and you are, are a boyfriend and you feel just terrible, like why, why, why God? Um, and then turn around and you find your soulmate, the next one. So it could be a blessing in disguise that something happens. And usually it does turn out that way. Um, so yeah. When something you think is going wrong actually turns out to be a good thing. That is a blessing in disguise. Go ahead. Oh, yes, yes. Good explanation. Yeah. Yes, and examples. So a blessing in disguise, yes, this is when something that a situation that seems bad or unlucky at first, but it results in something positive at a later date. So let's say you get fired from your job. Obviously, that seems bad, maybe even unlucky. But uh, later on, you get a job 10 times better. It pays better. You have a better, a better boss, a better co-workers. The location is better. Everything about this job is better. You can say getting fired was a blessing in disguise. My new job is so much better. Yes. yes. Next. <laughs> So, yes, that's a good job. Yeah, number 52, a dime a dozen, something that you can get a bunch of um, for cheap, you know, something that, like when I was younger, we used to go play in the mud and make mud trucks. So we would jack them up and we would put mud tires under there so we can go play in the mud. I don't know, you guys do that there? Probably not. Um, because you guys don't really have trucks. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, yeah, we, yeah, we would build these trucks to where they were, like you can barely climb into them. Mm -hmm. Like monster trucks. I'm sure you guys have seen monster trucks like the Grave Digger. It wouldn't be that big, but Anyways, so we would say um, the front ends of a Chevy pickup were a dime a dozen because you could pick them up anywhere. Um, or uh, things that are cheap you can and you could find anywhere, you would say those are dime a dozen. Something you um, that are really popular, so they're cheap. They're dime a dozen. So yes, go ahead, Saw. Oh, yes. Good. Yes, a dime a a dozen. This is when something uh, that is common and not special that uh, that example here tech startups in Silicon Valley is a dime a dozen. They are very common everywhere and they not very special. Everyone's a tech startup in Silicon Valley. A dime a dozen. Next, Daddy. Yeah, what does your guys' dimes look like? Do you have a dime? A dime is 10 cents here. Yes. Uh, let me see if I have here. Okay, I'll start on this one. So number 53. Um, oh, I yes, don't have To beat a later. So yeah, to beat around the bush. Uh, so you don't have a dime? No, but I can uh, figure out one to show you tomorrow. Okay, yeah, because we only or have like... When I have... I think five or six coins in our... Yeah. Uh, the... Our money, and then the rest is paper. Uh-huh. 
Okay, so we have the penny, the nickel, the dime, the quarter, uh, the 50 cent piece. Well, we don't actually don't do 50 cent pieces no more. That actually stopped a while ago, but we still have them in, in cycle. Uh, and then we have the, the dollar, the silver dollar, uh, which is now called, uh, it's like a Susan B. Anthony. It's not the silver dollar no more. It was back in the day, the silver dollar was that big, the 50 cent piece was that big, and then you got your quarter. But the Susan B. Anthony, it's smaller than the dollar, uh, the silver dollar. It's more like actually the size of a quarter. Oh, I have a quarter here. Oh, yes. So, yeah, do you guys got the a nickel, a dime, a penny, and a quarter? Yes. And what else do you got? You got a lot more change than we do. Uh, exactly the same. One cent. Fifty also. That's 50 cents? Oh, yes. yes. The same size as the quarter? Uh-huh. And I have here one. What, that's a dollar? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And so you just don't, uh, and then you have a nickel, a dime, and a penny. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you yes. have the same. You got? The same. Mm -hmm. As I, you know, it's the same. Oh, good. Okay. But you can have different names. Yeah, so just when I was down there, I remember seeing a whole lot of different colored coins. Um, so it seemed like you had a lot more kinds of change than we did. And then for yeah. like dollar bills, we have the one dollar, the two dollar bill, and then we have a five, a ten, a twenty, and a one hundred, and that's it. Um, the government, I heard, they made five hundred or a thousand dollar bills, but just for the government. But I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, probably a long time ago before all your money's electronic but yeah oh yes I don't like a lot one dollar three star there but I like uh, five dollars yes I oh, think yeah. there are a lot of interesting things but a lot of people like one dollar star there yes the and uh, yes dollar, uh, what is the name the dollar store. The dollar store, yes. And, uh, but there are a lot of useful things also. Yeah, they, they have a lot of stuff in there that um, is useful. Um, there is stuff in there that's more than dollar, but now I think they had to raise it up to, uh, it's not the dollar store anymore. I don't know, because everything's more than a dollar now. Mm. Yeah, I think it's called the store. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yes, as it, uh, there one in really close to my brother's house. One dollar and five, and another that is five dollars. Five dollars, I could uh, find a lot of interesting things. <laughs> oh, they had a five dollar store. Yes, there one five dollar oh, store. Please. I think it's the uh, close to Home Depot. It's close to his house. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. Four, four blocks from his house. Let's get back on track. Yep. Yes. We're done with this uh, this class. Um, so yeah, number fifty three. So to beat around the bush. To so this is something you would use as in if you're just getting around the subject that you're trying to talk about. Um, you're avoiding you're avoiding the actual subject you're trying you're talking about. You um, like if you're getting in trouble and your parents ask you, what did you do last night? And then you start talking and telling them the story, but you're not telling them exactly what happened. They would say, you're just beating it around the bush. Let's hear it. Spill the beans. You need to spill the beans. I want to hear what happened. Stop beating around the bush. So not actually explaining what happened is beating around the bush, going around the actual subject that you're trying to get to. So go ahead, Saul. Oh, really good. So far, so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yes, so to beat around the bush. This is when you avoid say, what do you mean? Because it's uncomfortable or awkward. So let's say you want to end your romantic relationship with your partner. Your friend could tell you, don't beat around the bush. Be direct and tell that person you want to break up. Perfect example, yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Don't, let's just tell them what you are trying to do. Yes. Yes. All right. Number 54. Better late than never. Better late than never, I always say. A lot of people say that. Um, at least getting it done. You got it done. Better late than never. Um, sometimes you actually beat yourself up because you're like, man, I was supposed to get that done. I need to get that done. But when you finally get it done, you would say, better late than never. At least you got it done. And it's not still sitting there. So, yeah. Go ahead, Saw. That was a pretty simple one there. Yes. <clears throat> Great, yes. So, uh, better late than never. So, let's say you've been working with a company for 10 years and you finally got your first promotion after. 10 long years and you're you're telling your friend this and you're a little annoyed because you've been there for 10 years but your friends could say better late than ever to remind you that yes it took 10 years but it's better than not having a promotion, better late than never. Yes. Ooh, that's a big bullet. That's a fifty caliber bullet. That's big. So yes. Um, yes. Number fifty-five. To bite <laughs> the bullet. To uh, basically like tear the bandaid off. Just rip it off. So just. Just suck it up and tell the truth. Or um, instead of beating it around the bush, you just go right in and tell them the facts. You're biting the bullet to uh, to just tear the just just tear that bandaid off instead of try to pull it off slowly. Yeah, just getting that something not good or unpleasant out of the way as soon as you can. That's what we'd say. Just bite the bullet and do it. Yeah. Jump off that cliff into the water. Just bite the bullet and jump. Yeah. So now, actually, I know where that term came from. That was back when... Um, oh, yes? Back from the war, uh, they would put the bullet in their mouth and start sawing on a limb. But they had to take a limb off or start cutting into them to do surgery. They didn't have pain relievers back then. And so they put the lead part of the bullet in their mouth. So they have something to, uh, if they didn't have wood or something, you know, a bite on, yeah, it's biting the bullet to take the pain or the unpleasantness away. So yeah, go ahead, Saw. Oh yes, it's good to bring us examples when you remember. Yeah. It's so to bite the bullet. I love this idiom. You know, because it, uh, that is when you force yourself to do something difficult or unpleasant because it's necessary or inevitable. Inevitable means eventually you have to do it. So why not bite the bullet and do it? Yeah. No. For example, just bite the bullet and ask your boss 
for a promotion. Yeah, inevitable. Death and taxes are inevitable. Something that you can't get away from. <laughs> oh, yes. Death and taxes, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You taxes, you'll never get away from death. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable, yes. Yeah, number 56, to break a leg. You know, I learned this one once before, uh, um, why, where this came from. But anyways, I'm going to explain this oh, first. Oh, really? Do you remember? Good luck. Um, to, yeah, basically just saying good luck. Have a good good performance, good time. Um but yeah, usually they say this on uh, uh, for people that are, go up on stage, for like com comedians or for actors. That's usually when you say to go br to break a leg. And the reason they said this back in the day is because if you said to go break a leg, then you more likely wouldn't break a leg. So they would say it so that it was the opposite. Like that's um, that's where we would use the um, reverse psychology or the your, uh, what was I saying earlier? Oh, never mind. Anyways, yeah. So if you say break a leg, then you wouldn't. Like if I said, I hope it doesn't rain today. Superstitious. Yeah. It's for superstitious. But go ahead, Saw. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Great. And do you remember uh, where each uh, idiom? That's what I was talking about, that they would use it for. Um, for people that go on stage, they would tell them, good luck or break a leg. So that's where I was saying. Yeah. And so uh -huh. if you tell them to break a leg, then they wouldn't break a leg because it's superstitious. So if you say it, then they wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. Uh -huh. Yes. Good, yes. Yeah, it's, it's all about superstitious. It's like, mm -hmm. I hope it rains today when you don't want it to rain, saying mm -hmm. the opposite. No, it's the opposite. Yeah, saying the opposite. Uh -huh. so, uh, so it doesn't happen. Like when I when I would take my sunglasses on a, when I get in my truck and drive to work or something, if I take my sunglasses, then it yeah. wouldn't be funny. If I forget my sunglasses at home, then it, the sun would come out. Seemed like that was happening all the time. So if I wanted it <laughs> sunny, I'd leave my sunglasses at home. <laughs> yes, it's it's exactly that. When you you take it, you don't need to use, no? And when yep. you forget, you need. Yep. We would so, say better have it than not and not need it than need it and not have it. Oh, is that an idiom also, yes? We would say that, yeah, it's better to have it and not need it than to ha than to need it and, and not to need have, it. It. have it. Crystal. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, for sure. Yeah. Go ahead, so take it, break a leg. Yes, yes. So this is a very common idiom. Yes, in the way to say good luck break a leg yes but we usually especially use this before uh, someone gives a performance as uh, daddy told you uh, uh, much more in a the theatrical performance but when you're going to a job interview you are in a sense perform or you are doing your speaking exam for your IELTS you are performing. So before you speaking exam, your friends, your partner, you could say, break a leg, which means good luck. Good luck for your IELTS exam or something else. Perfect. All right. So yeah, number 57, to call it a day. Yeah, we're about to call it a day. Um, when uh, it's almost five o'clock, because it's our, we call it banker's hours, nine to five. Um, when it's almost five o'clock, you say, well, let's call it a day. Let's 
let's go home. Um, when you, yeah, when you're done, when, when the day is getting close to ending or when you're done working on the project for the day, let's say, let's call it a day. Well, yeah, pretty good. Go ahead, Saw. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yes. So many different time zone. Yeah. Exactly. Usually when you say uh, it's five o'clock somewhere, though, it's, it's time to go have a drink. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. I got this sign on my wall. It was from a song, like an old country song in the beginning of the 2000s. Oh, yes. Do you know how to song? To sing the song? Uh, no. I'm not mm -hmm. very good. Just the lyric? Yeah, I just that was one of them. It's five o'clock somewhere. No, huh? Yeah, because he's ready to get off work. He's ready to go home. He's tired of his boss nagging at him. No, uh -huh. because you are so good in songs, you you know a lot by heart. Well, and he says it's five o'clock somewhere because it, instead of um, because people used to give you crap if you drank before five or before noon, even um, if you were to pour an, an alcoholic drink before noon, that's like what? It's not even noon yet. Well, it's five oh. o'clock. This is what you would say. <laughs> oh, good to know. I didn't yeah. know. So if you're having a drink at seven in the morning, you're well, it's five o'clock somewhere. So <laughs> it's time to have anyway. Exactly. To drink anyway. <laughs> Go ahead, Saw. Oh. Yes. Uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, to call it a day. Oh, yeah, I did. I got it. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, yeah, but in that place can be night in the other uh, morning. So morning doesn't work to drink, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, some heads work in some heads. Nah. Okay, so uh, to call it a day. So, uh, what can I what what else can I say about that one? No, call it a day. Yes, no. Yeah, so yeah. when you call it a day, it means you stop working for that day. Usually, because time is up, or because you've done enough work for that day and you're going to stop for example it's getting late let's call it a day let's sure. call it a day so that means you can go home yes yes next so number 58 to cut somebody some slack Instead of riding someone's back or they're riding their butt, you, you cut them some slack is what you'd say to the, like if a teacher is riding on somebody so hard and they're just like being a little, a little over the top um, on somebody, you would go up to the teacher and say, hey, cut him some slack. He's having a rough day today. Just, just relax, let him leave up, get, uh, get off his back. Is what you you know, cut him some slack. Stop riding him so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. So okay, go ahead, Saw. Okay. So uh to cut somebody some slack. Good examples there. So uh let's Say, uh, there's this coworker who has been showing up late to work every day, every day, and not doing a good job at work. They seem a very destructive. They're not working very hard. They're not 
contributing, but that person's dad just died. His dad just died. So you might say, let's cut him some slack. His dad just died. So you're not going to punish him as severely as you normally would. Yes? Yes. Next, Betty. 59. Already. 59, yes. Yeah, so. Um, so, yeah, number 59, to be glad to see the back of. I like to see the back of Saw. I hate to see her leave, but I love to watch her go. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, to be glad to see the back of. I don't know if we really see the, uh, say this one, we more say it's good to see the end of the tunnel. So no. I'm sure that's what they're meaning here. Oh. Um that you're getting close to the end of or being done with something. Is that what they're trying to say? To be pleased that someone has left. Oh, it's for someone that they don't like being around. Or annoying person. So go ahead, Saw, on this one. I don't, I've never really heard this one too much. So. Okay. Yes. Saw about that. For saying that about you. If you didn't to me either, <laughs> me more than you. So to be glad to see the back of, yes. Well, it's when somebody's happy because you don't like this person. Uh, let's say uh, is Jane, Jane's last day it work. She quit, she has a new job, but you didn't like Jane. You can say, I'm glad to see the back of the Jane. So yes, that I wasn't meaning it like you had it on there. It was more like mine was seeing the back of your back of you because of your butt or something, you know. I hate to see you leave, but love to watch you go. Because of the sway oh. of your butt when you walk, you know, that's it. It's, it's, it's a guy term. It's actually on a song, a country song. Um, no, uh -huh. a, that one you know how to sing, yes? That one's uh, pretty good. Yeah, the honky tonk, but donkey donk. We call it a honky tonk, but donk donk. Mm. Someone has a big butt and they know how to walk and sway. It says the honky tonk, but donkey donk. Oh, I think I know that one. Yeah. Uh, hate to watch her, see her go, but love to watch her um, walk away. Every hour goes, anyways. But yeah, they, yes, you are good uh, to sing. But, Can you sing? <laughs> no. Let's no. search the lyric to remember. Yeah, search the lyrics for me as I go on okay. this one. Um, but it's by Trace Adkins, I believe. He's the one that sings it. Trace Adkins. Mm -hmm. uh, love his music. Love his voice. He's got a good voice. So yeah, it's number okay. six. Um, sure. Yeah, to be the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Um, I remember um, hearing about the reason they use this term, but I don't. I can't. I can't quite recall uh, the whole thing. So, anyways, yeah, to. To compare something to sliced bread is because it's a great invention. Um, I don't know why they don't say the greatest thing since electricity or the wheel, which they actually do say sometimes the wheel. But um, yeah, to be something compared to sliced bread is because it was a great idea or great invention. Uh, made everything so much easier. Um, so yeah, it just makes things, it made things easier on you and your, or in life in general. Yeah, go ahead, Saw. 
Yes. So sixty to be the best thing since sliced bread. This is a compliment used to say that something usually technology and innovation is extremely useful, excellent, or high quality. So you could give me a compliment and say, and daddy, this YouTube channel is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> if you think that's true, then put it in the comments. Next. Perfect. Um, yeah, so number 61, there are plenty of fish in the sea. So we actually have a dating site that turned kind of more than just a dating site. It's called Plenty of Fish um, because that's I remember them saying that uh, when you were dating someone when you were younger and uh, you guys split up, your parents would say, don't worry, there's plenty of fish out there. That means there's more people out there. There's not just that one person. So yeah, plenty of fish. Um, yeah, go ahead, Saw. Yes, great. Good examples, Daddy. Yes, there are plenty of fish in the sea. So let's say your friend went on a date and uh, she says, Pierre hasn't called me back. And it's been three weeks. You can encourage your friends by saying, don't worry, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Yes, so good, Daddy. Anything yeah. else there yeah. in today's class? Perfect. I liked it. Um, we uh, had a lot of discussion in this one, and I don't know um, if you guys out there like us talking about things like we did this class it was a little different. We were trying something new. Um, so let us know in the comments uh, if you liked hearing about our livelihood or our uh, uh, discussions between the two of us. But let us know, and uh, if you like, let us uh, push like and. So you could, I'd like to see all you guys tomorrow and thank you again for coming. And um, bye for now. Say ta ta. Yes. <laughs> ciao, ciao. <laughs> yes, don't forget to subscribe. Help out our channel. We need your help and your comments if you like. Uh, uh, bring us what you want to, to learn and we can prepare and make a video yes and uh, press like yes and, and uh, see you guys tomorrow i hope you have a an enjoyable time to study english to study all those idioms and we can continue in the next class yes we had the first class already that is the second and uh, it will be 150 idioms to you guys know a lot, a bunch of them and selected idioms for you guys. So take your time and see you soon. Bye-bye. Night. Night.